नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सामबुद्ध से नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सामबुद्ध से नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सामबुद्ध से गंगी तुर्जी नर जो तवा तम जी पुंग दम्बे छुन तुंजे भी को तम दे लाशांत मोस्ट venerable uh, monks and nuns moderator pujing sui distinguished scholars ladies and gentlemen first of all i would like to thanks to organizer giving me this opportunity to share some of my view in this august gathering Org- organizer has been told me to write a paper on distinct characteristics of tibetan buddhism view of the three lineage of the buddhism tibetan southern and chinese buddhism actually i have written quite long paper which is in your hand maybe uh, since inauguration to this morning which i heard little bit i changed my view uh, uh to my presentation so i am not going to read my paper i am not going to present this my paper just uh, out the line of the what is tibetan buddhism is i would like to share because since i am tibetan buddhist monk of course uh, if you know how tibetan buddhism uh, you know teach maybe you can understand the distinction of the uh, tibetan buddhism is uh, other than saudian and uh, han buddhism so in this regard uh, almost similar with the previous speakers i feel that shakyamuni buddha was great physician actually and uh, at the same time he was the great uh, engineer or architect of the mind you know that physician doesn't have any authority to prescribe the medicine physician has to follow to the patient for example if some patient is suffering with the tuberculosis need to prescribe the tb antidote if someone is suffering with the cancer need to provide the antidote of the cancer and of course if someone is suffering with the headache and diarrhea so on need to prescribe according to the uh, disease likewise i think shakyamuni buddha thought at different different types of i think antidotes it is i think important sir for example we are in this hall more than 300 people of course we are all human being but our ex- appearance each and individual is different 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 appearances and likewise we all speak the way of speaking the way of uh, the rhythm and way of speaking is different different each and every one if appearance is different is way of uh, saying or uh, speech is different why not different the way of thinking this should be need to respect i think so therefore buddhism is diverse it is the characteristic of i think buddhism therefore you can see in the buddhism of course theravada tradition is there among among theravada tradition there are 18 schools already occurred during the ashoka till the ashoka period and if you see the mahayana again there are 
Vyabashika, Swatantrika, Vijanvadin, Madhyamik, and in Vajrayana, again, you can see Action Tantra, Performance Tantra, Yoga Tantra, Haya Yoga Tantra, and so on. So, of course, neat, because the people had different, different dispositions, different levels. According to different levels, need to be show the path, I think. So, therefore, I think that Buddhism is very vast and deep. So whenever someone come to me, someone come to me and ask, please, Negi, teach me Buddhism, then I ask to the person that, because I don't have the cleverance power, Shakyamuni Buddha has cleverance power, he knows the level of the people, level of the trainees, and according to the level of training, he teach. But I don't have the, that power, that potential. So I ask those who want to know Buddhism, then I ask him, why do you want to learn Buddhism? What is your goal? What is your intention to learn Buddhism? If you want happy in this very life, of course, there is some way. If you want to reborn in higher realm, in next life, if you want to achieve form realm, formless realm, or God realm, of course, there is way, there is path. And if you want to free from this cyclic existence, if you feel that this world is full of suffering, you want to free from this cyclic existence, then definitely, of course, there is way, there is path we taught by Buddha. And if your intention is practicing bodhisattva path, if you wish to help limitless being, sentient being, of course, there is bodhisattva path. And at the same time, if you want to attain Buddhahood in this very life, again, there is also path. So what would you like? Why you want to learn Buddhism? Then according to the uh, trainees, according to the you know, person, I try to explain. And same time I told to the, my students and of course those trainees, you know, uh, of course Buddhism is still alive. Okay? Four Noble Truth, Eight Purva, Pratite Samutpat, and all Mahayana and Vajrayana tradition, whatever Buddha has taught, still we have that. We have that lineage. So, it is up to you what kind of you teaching you need, I ask. So, in that context, if someone wish to have happiness in this very life, of course, yes, there are many ways to happiness life. So again, when we talk about happiness, again, we need to know that. What is happiness is? We need to find out. What is suffering is, when we talk about the suffering and happiness, of course, according to Buddhism, our personality is uh, of, constituted of the name and uh, rupa. Our personality is not only the biological stuffs, not only the physical stuffs. Of course, mind is also there. In order to gain genuine happiness, we need to balance both from body and the mind. So Buddha has taught that. What is person is? Of course, person is five aggregate. Form aggregate, feeling aggregates, perception aggregate, mind volition and consciousness aggregate. Of course, among five aggregates, four are belong to the mind and mind volition part. One is only the physical part. So, when we talk about suffering and happiness, of course, suffering of phys uh, physical and uh, suffering of mental, we need to know that. Without which, I don't think we can interpret Buddhism properly. In order to get uh, physical fitness, so we need, like bread we need, we need clothes, we need shelter, we need vitamins, uh, we need uh, carbohydrate and minerals and so on. 
not only that we need yoga, exercise, many things to keep our body fit. Keep our body fit is not the happiness, genuine happiness or ultimate happiness. In this context, I can say that in this hall, we are physically fit. We, we all are physically fit. If you are suffering with the physical, definitely either we are in the hospital or in our house, in bed. We are all here. It shows that we are physically fit. But contemplate that whether you are satisfied with your life. Are you happy? Then if you are not happy, what is that? That is physical or mental? That is mental. So likewise, to, in order to keep fit body, so we need to keep mind fit, uh, morality, concentration, and wisdom we need. We need to go parallel. Without which we can't get the genuine happiness. So when we talk about the mind happiness, then we need to think of that. Where, what is the origin? What is the cause of mental distraction? Mental problem, we need to think of that. I think most of Buddhist teaching is emphasized on the mental side rather than physical side. Sometimes I think that uh, uh, mental happiness is more powerful than physical, I think, happiness. Even sometimes our physical, you know, requirements, when our mind dominate, you know, it creates lots of trouble. For example, uh, we need clothes. Without having clothes, we need cold. Huh? And uh, we need, of course, AC and many things we need. Of course, we need shoe and so on. This is the requirement of the physical uh, body to keep fit. But when mind dominate to your physical requirement, again make problem. For instance, uh, my sandal is uh, uh, 2,000 rupees sandal. It is enough for me. But if my mind say, oh, you are professor, how it is possible to, we are only 2,000, you need branded one, you need 5,000 one, this and that. If we follow that, there is no end of the craving. There is no end of the solution. So therefore, we need very much mind training, I think. So again, I, I am staying because of oh, very less time. Okay, then I am not going to talk uh, uh, those who wish to have happiness is very in this very life. I think to them, just to, uh, keep meditation and relax and go to the theater and go to the support. And these are, I think, okay to keep it in this very life. That is, I think, enough. If those who want to achieve uh, next life in higher realm or good birth, to them need to the practice generosity. You need to practice. In order to achieve good wealth, you need to practice generosity. In order to born in the higher realm, you need to practice the morality. If you want to become next life smart, handsome, and so on, you need to practice the uh, patient. If you want to uh, attain the form realm and formless realm, you need to practice the dhyanas, then only way to uh, achieve next life in form and formless realm. And if you think that this world is full of suffering, doesn't matter I born in the God realm or uh, form realm, again, we, I have to come down to the earth. You know, therefore, these six migrants are, all these six migrants are full of suffering. In order to free from this cyclic existence, I want to, uh, if you want to practice, of course, we need to you know, follow the perfect Theravada tradition. We need to contemplate impermanence. We need to think of the this cyclic existence is full of suffering. We need to think of this body is unclean, impure, full of filthy, this our body, which we attach too much. If you look inside, what is there is? This is like a filthy creator machine kind of. Whatever come to this body, everything change into the uh, 
you know, impurity. This is the nature of our body. This need to be thing and need to be thing you know, impermanence and selflessness. If you do this practice, you will detach with this body and during the death, Okay, uh, why we reborn? We need to know that. Why we rebirth? Why we reborn again and again in the cyclic existence? Because of the craving, because of the desire toward our body, we get birth. Okay, during the death, during the death, no one want to die. You know, even someone is suffering with a chronic disease, he or she don't want to die, actually. You know, I have seen many. A uh, sick person who is going to die. I, uh, I know that after five, uh, two or three hours, he or she is going to die. But he keep expectation that shall I uh, live? Shall I become? Mm, uh, means recover? Then I say yes, yes. You are going to recover like that. Means it shows that no one want to die. This force, this craving, attached to our our body is caused to reborn to the next life. You know, if we did, during the death, if we die with joy or happy, without any craving, without any desire, I think cessation is there. When we again talk uh, attachment to our body, that is one thing. Even someone, those who are suffering with the cancer, even someone wish to be die. You know, uh, he or she doesn't have any attachment to her, her body, but he have attachment toward her phenomena, toward uh, his wife or husband or kids or bank balance or property or many things. Because of this attachment, attachment to our phenomena cause us to the reborn in this cyclic existence. So we need to detach from self-craving and phenomena craving. You know, so this comes through the practice of impermanence, through the practice of impurity, through the practice of selfness. You know, with these, if you, if you practice this, during the death, you will die with joy. Then there is no more rebirth. There is no more rebirth. You know, likewise, some, one, some of my friends ask, they are very light to reborn in the Amindava pure land. Then I told them, to attain Amitabha pure land is very easy. I used to say to them, how easy? Just during the death, you need to visualize the Amitabha pure land. During the death, if you are oneness with the Amitabha, during your last breath, if you are contemplation, if you imagine of the Amitabha pure land, your soul will, your spirit will, Direct go to the Amitava. Actually, last moment is very much important, I think. So this is what uh, I can say according to Theravada tradition. They feel that, they think that the cyclic existence is full of suffering. Therefore, in order to free from cyclic existence, they contemplate what I have mentioned before. But according to the Mahayana tradition, no. According to the Mahayana tradition, this world is not full of suffering. This world is the pure land. This world is the uh, palace of joy. This world is suffering for those who are born with the affliction, destructive emotion. Those who born this universe through the destructive emotion, through the craving, ignorance, jealousy, and so on, to them, this world is suffering. This world is suffering for them. Because our cause is defilement. The result of defilement must be suffering. There is no question of the joy of this world. But Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva, know that, you know, Bodhisattva accumulate the merit, always. Bodhisattva are compassionate one. Bodhisattva the practice the six parameter. No, they are a meritorious person. Therefore, they don't have any physical problem. Physical problem comes from unwholesome action. Bodhisattva practice the wholesome actions. Therefore, they are meritorious person. To them, there is no suffering. And they are wise. They know the nature of this universe is illusory-like. You know, 
interdependent originated one. There is nothing inherent existence. This world is, of course, changing each and every moment, or the nature of this universe is like a you know, dream kind of. There is no such solid inherent existence. They know that. Because of their, their wise, then therefore there, to them there is no problem with the mind. There is no any suffering with the mind because they know the reality of the, this world. If someone has good meritorious, if someone has no any physical problem, if someone has no any mind uh, problem, why should they bother to free from this cyclic existence? To them, this, this is the world where they have to the work, you know, help to the uh, needed people is their ambition, you know. They never be, uh, feel any sorrow. This is like a support person, you no, know, no, to one boxer, you know, they work very hard, you know, blood comes out, teeth broken down, still they are enjoying. When we see, uh, it seems very troublesome kind of to them, that is the great joy. That is the great honor for them. Likewise, I think Bodhisattva, uh, you know, uh, because of the meritorious uh, 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 action and the wiseness, to them this world is not full of suffering. Therefore, they pray. Jisit namka nebardu, desit dangni nejujo doe dungal sebra, till space will remain. Sentient being will remain. Till sentient being will remain. I will reborn in this universe again and again in order to mother like being, save to mother like being. That is their supplication. That is their prayer, actually. They enjoy to reborn in this sadly existence in order to benefit the being. This comes through the understanding of in interdependent origination. You know, since beginning of this time, we depend on the, you know, beings. Our happiness is come out from sentient being. That is, I think, very important to need to know that. You know, everything is interconnected, interdependent. I used to say my students, you know, for example, when we are having a cup of tea, we need to think of where does this tea come from? These tea leaves come from the uh, tea bagan where labor are working hard in sun and rain. And through their work hard, you know, tea come to the market and come to the, your the table. You know? So you need to think of that. These teas come from the many people's hard work. If you realize that when you see the you know, poor people, when you see the labor, hard worker, your compassion toward will uh, comes up by its own kind of that what we need. For example, this beautiful building, who built this? You know, this is built by others. You are com comfortably here living. This is built by others. We need to think of the uh, depth of the other. We need to think of the other kindness. If we have the such attitude, this I use to my uh, colleagues also, you know, uh, because my profession is teaching, you know. Mm, uh, when I talk with my uh, colleagues, I used to say that because of these students, you are calling a professor. Because of these students, you, uh, you are getting salary. If you don't do justice with your classroom students, you are accumulating the unwholesome action. You never be success. You need to be very much honest. You need to think of your students, you know, because of these students, uh, you are knowing as professor of this university, that college, and this and that, right? So we in, in that way, we need to apply every, everywhere, in office, even in the market, you know? Even, I think, need to think of the, these big uh, agencies, you know? If labor are not work, how they are, uh, you know, uh, uh, how their business will be success, you know. So interdependent ordination is very much important to think. Uh, 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 Mahayana, Mahayana means, of course, interdependent ordination are, of course, explained in the Theravada tradition also, but Mahayana tradition, uh, 
uh, in conventional level also in order to generate uh, generate the compassion uh, so they uh, they emphasize interdependent ori origination very much actually short of time otherwise i want to explain little bit uh, uh, emptiness and interdependent origination anyhow three minutes still more so i want to explain little bit about the interdependent origination and em emptiness because i think that someone has maybe confusion about what is emptiness is so i will give you the analogy actually for example when we see this paper we see this paper like an inherent kind of exists by its own nature count right when we see this paper we think that this paper is inherent its own kind of but in fact not you know this paper is coming out from the tree right if there was no tree there is no way to come this paper uh, paper is come out from the tree when we say paper is come out from the tree of course in order to grow the tree we need earth without that where you grow the tree you need earth earth is not enough you need the ocean without ocean there is no moisture there is no rain there is no snowfall if there is no snowfall there is no rain there is no way uh, to come water water is coming out from the ocean ocean has big contribution to become this paper likewise uh, likewise uh, of course sun ray need without sun there is no way to ocean become a stream so sun has contribute to become this paper likewise uh, likewise we need air we need uh, space all these five elements contribute to become this paper you know the paper is not inherent it's on it's come out from the five elements if you back whatever is contributed by earth back to the earth whatever is contributed by the ocean back to the ocean whatever contributed by sun back to the sun whatever contributed by the water back to the what is remain there empty nothing of course that is empty interdependent is empty empty is interdependent there is no such inherent existence anything sometimes philosopher talk impermanent to me impermanent is very difficult task to understand you know what is impermanent is whether the nature of impermanence is nonness when we say arising ceasing what is the nature of arising what is the nature of ceasing arising is look like a existence ceasing is look like a become nonness kind of if that is the definition of impermanent how then existence produced to the nonness and how nonness produced to the existence no way if thing is uh, ultimately exist then how it is uh, disappear how it become nonness when we say arising and ceasing whether there is between gap or not if there is gap then how it is possible to arising arising from gap is arising from nonness nothingness if something is not disappear then how do you say arising you know impermanent is not easy we easy we talk that yes everything is arising ceasing arising ceasing kind of to know proper impermanent i think to know that all phenomena are illusion like dream like then we can able to explain impermanent also right way otherwise there is difficult to explain an impermanent in general way i think now uh, question answer yeah, okay. so uh, thank you for uh, listening thank you oh. 我们非常谢谢 c a m p b e l l 教授给我们这么这么精辟的分析哈。他今天是比较呃随性，就是说想他谈呃他想要谈的，并没有按照那个那个论文集，所以大家可以参考一下他论文集的内容哈。不过刚谈的确实是蛮多有关于大乘佛教的一些思想哈。那因为时间的关系，所以我想嗯，我们是不是就 open 两个 question 就好？好，请是。
dear Venerable, I really enjoy your analogy about boxer when you're talking about the six parameters. My question is, uh, when we in in front of impermanence, how do we deal with or get along with impermanence in a, mo a more graceful way? Yes, of course, since beginningless time, we attach to word, you know, permanent kind of, we think that inherent kind, therefore, not easy to grasp impermanent very easy way. Of course, gradually, if you contemplate, if you think again and again, you know, if you once become familiar with, maybe then you will enjoy with the impermanence, you know, of course, uh, we hold very rigid way. Therefore, we are suffering lots. Therefore, we are suffering lots. For example, someone has said one month ago, you know, someone abused you or someone maybe praised you one month ago. Still, you are holding uh, rigidly, you know. Uh, you think that, yes, only this morning, only very moment, he and she abused me, kind of. We feel very much anger. In fact, one month is gone, you know. There, whoever you abuse, he or she is changed, actually. You are also already changed, you know. There is no question to abuse or praise and this kind. If we have such kind of understanding, so understanding of impermanent will, you know, give you the great joy, kind of. Same, you know, this, is, this world is very much complicated, huh? Uh, joy there, suffering will there. Uh, go, uh, uh, happiness and suffering comes and down. If we have that understanding of impermanence, we take everything very easy, I think. So, yeah. Okay, we will open uh, a question. Yes, Wang Wang Yes, Wang Bante, I enjoyed quite a lot your presentation, but I have to make a uh, comment on uh, what you said about uh, uh, Dukkha of Theravada tradition and I would like also to listen to your comment on what I, uh, what I am going to say. I think uh, about uh, suffering, uh, uh, our understanding about suffering uh, is uh, sort of revealed in different layers. That one level as I understand is Sanya Vinyana level, that is the level of general yes. sense perception. Yes. So at that level you <coughs> actually do not see uh, suffering and uh, and uh, and uh, at that level you are attached to uh, the sense perception and sort of uh, then uh, you uh, sort of have the desire of them and uh, at that level actually uh, you you have sort of joy in them but uh, they are a negative results because uh, all this attachment is uh, finally going to be a sort of suffering then that we call asad negative consequence, that is the sanya vijnana level, the ordinary sense perception. Other uh, level is the moral level, that is, uh, that is what we call, that you see the permanence, impermanence, but still you are not going to be disappointed, because you see that there is a way that you can deal with this impermanence, dukkha. So then what you are doing is that you follow, okay, what is the way that you can approach with this suffering? Then, you know, I, I mean, if you are a Buddhist, I mean, if you are looking from the Buddhist perspective, that you understand, okay, there is a moral way to deal with them. Though there is a way that you are, okay, now, uh, okay, even though I see the suffering, uh, I, I, I should not sort of desire us of that. I, I don't have th these two things, attachment and detachment. Either I don't have either attachment or detachment, so this is called middle way. So that is the uh, moral level. Upeksha, yeah. Up, yeah, upeksha level. And the, the, the third level is the perfect level, that is the enlightenment. So uh, therefore, I think uh, even in the Theravada traditions, so we are not always talking about suffering. So uh, when you come to the second level, I should also say that uh, uh, we are clearly saying that, I mean, when you come to the second level, the path is the Eightfold Noble Path. So the, for the level, the moral path is the Eightfold Noble Path. So when you are talking about moral path, there is a Pali statement, Kemo Maggo Sovatiko Pitigamaniyo. Kema means protective, right. uh, Pitigamaniyo means that you have to go with joy, yeah. Kemo Maggo Pitigamaniyo Sovatiko means uh, comfortable. So, <laughs> so this is a comfortable uh, sort of uh, protective uh, way 
uh, to deal with the uh, sort of suffering. Yes, okay, yes so. definitely. Yeah, I, I would like to I, listen I, to uh, Yes, I agree with your you know, comment. Of course, uh, uh, we, uh, Mahayana tradition also, we used to say that, you know, because lack of time, I couldn't go through there, you know. When we talk about suffering, of course, there are three types of suffering. Suffering of suffering, changing of suffering, all pervasive suffering. You know, suffering of suffering is very gross level. Uh, this comes even in old religion. You know, suffering of suffering can understand everyone. You know, second, two one, last two one is the, I think, characteristic or special, uh, uh, you know, seeing phenomena is, I think, Buddhist, uh, Buddhist uh, quality. For example, you know, uh, Seeing impermanent, everything is, each. okay, I, I, I will explain second one, changing of suffering, you know, this is actually mentioned many scholars before also, changing of suffering means like uh, those who don't have experience to fly, you know, wish to be fly very much, you know, when I will get to fly kind of, you know, okay, when you first board in aeroplane, maybe you will enjoy very much, you will happy very much. When you go to, to San Francisco, like 22 hours, then you will bore, you know. So it means that whatever worldly joy we think, actually that is the, the suffering, you know. No knowingly we think that that is joy. But whatever worldly joy we think, that is actually uh, source of the suffering. This. Take example for clothes or air condition, whatever it may be, that is changing. In order to know that changing of suffering, we need to know the realization of um, uh, impermanence. Then only this compassion can come. You know, if you don't have understanding of the impermanent nature of the phenomena, there is no solution. As I be mentioned before, you know, someone has said me something uh, one month ago. Uh, still, rigidly, I am holding that and I, I, I am facing lots of trouble, tension. My BP is going on because of no, knowing the impermanent. If I have that understanding, uh, I need not to be bothered about what he or she said to me one month ago, second one. Main one is third one, all pervasive suffering one. Until and unless we have this body, there is no way to free from suffering. This is the root cause. This having this body is the cause of all suffering. Therefore, of course, I mentioned there was the tradition, try to detach from this uh, uh, attachment toward this body. You know. Therefore, they practice impermanent. Therefore, they practice impurity. Therefore, they practice that uh, lack of selflessness. You know, through this practice, they become detached. So, therefore, they no more their birth will be over, right? So, I think all those explanations are the same. OK, 好, 那我们, 呃, 再次非常谢谢, 哦, Campbell教授他这一场这么精辟的演说 5 minutes break before next session's presentation 我们再次谢谢Campbell教授, 谢谢。<笑>